about shitty companies and exciting announcements. Extra, extra, hear all about it. guys and welcome to the podcast that uh occasionally podcasts <laughs> i'm the dean of games the dean slater on all platforms and joining me today from twitch's graveyard we have gavin yo uh so God damn, everything just keeps happening and we just keep putting off the show because of life events. And it sucks. Hell, I made a thumbnail for an episode I was planning on recording two weeks ago. I made the thumbnail and everything. It's all prepared. And then shit happened and it's like, well, I guess this thumbnail's never going to be used. Um, but, uh... And then also we're kind of lazy. Yeah, I mean, I've been doing stuff. I power washed the house. I power washed someone else's fucking house. I. <laughs> it's just, it, it sucks. Uh, but yes, uh, as far as content wise, I've been a little, uh, little off the ball recently. I didn't even stream at all. Um, on Sunday, like I normally do. Um. Mm -hmm. But, uh, that's, that's been my life. How's your life been going? Mm -hmm. I don't know, same as it always has. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, your life's pretty forgettable. I mean, how many times, uh, how many times have we asked you what your name is? <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> uh, it's that's a inside uh, joke uh, between us. You don't need to worry about it. Um, <laughs> this is this is extra extra. Your weekly gaming news podcast covering the news leading up to uh, Monday. September 18th, 2023. Uh, and I say your weekly gaming news podcast. At this point, it's sometimes your weekly gaming news podcast. Uh, and if you this like is your, this, whenever we decide to give it to you, news uh, game podcast. Yeah. I'm hoping to get back to weekly, but I'm not going to make any promises at this point because uh, at this point, our word means nothing because we've broken our word so many times. Uh, but you can go to patreon.com slash the briefing room and let's get to some news. Uh, so first things first, uh, do you want to start depressing or exciting? Mm, is there an option for both? I and mean, I can mix them in. Sure. I've got three depressing <laughs> stories and two positive stories. So I could intersperse the the three. Um, so let's start with the big one, the one that's been in the news literally all week because they just won't fucking shut their mouths, bro. Um, and that's Unity. Uh, have you heard anything uh, about the Unity backlash and all that? I heard Unity was doing some bullshit about like. Developers having to pay like what was it like twenty cents per download of their game and shit if yeah. they used Unity and yeah. So yeah, uh, it was um, uh, there was a specific number you had to sell a specific number of copies, but yeah, yeah. 
um, that is the gist of it is they, uh, they changed their policy. So rather than, um, paying for the program, you're paying for every download, which, uh, is problematic because let's say the game is controversial. Um, mm -hmm. and people could, uh, just download it uninstall it, download it again, uninstall it, and just basically make the game purposely flush down the toilet. You give the consumer so much power to influence yeah. uh, these studios. Um, and then uh, and then it's just kind of shitty in the first place, especially with what Epic's been doing, where like Epic's like, hey, we're making plenty of money with uh, Fortnite, um, Rocket League, Fall Guys. Tell you what, if you make your game with uh, Unreal Engine and you put it on uh, the Epic Game Store, um, you get 100% of the profits. Like, that's the, this comes literally weeks after they're like, hey, your first... Your first six months, if you go to Epic Game Store, if you put your game there, your first six months, you get all of the profits. Every single dollar goes to you. Um, and then Unity's like, hey, yeah, we're going to charge you per download. And then they've walked it back, saying that, oh, you know, there's exceptions um and like when people are like okay what about with fraudulent like the example i gave with people downloading it and un you know and uninstalling it and downloading it again and they're like mm. what about stuff like that what are how are we supposed to deal with that and they're like oh we have our own proprietary software that tracks that so basically they're like oh you have to take us at our word that will protect you from that yeah. Um, and we can't share that with you because it's proprietary, so it's a, it's a trade secret. Um, and uh, so the most recent development is they put out a tweet saying, uh, and that was yesterday, saying, We have heard you. We apologize for the confusion and the angst the runtime fee policy we announced on Tuesday caused. We are listening, talk. Uh, we are listening, talking to our team members, community customers, and partners, and we'll be making changes to the policy. We'll share an update in a couple of days or whatever. They, but the thing is, they walked it back, and then they're like, "Nah, actually, we're doubling down on the policy," and now they're walking it back again. Um, yeah. yeah. Now, keep in mind that the person running Unity right now was running EA when people were complaining about how uh, evil their uh, monetization was yeah. when all of that was going down. He ended up having to step down and went to Unity. And now Unity is doing the same thing. So... Mm -hmm. I wish I could say that it was just an accident, but the person currently running the ship has that history. Yeah. Of being a shitty individual. Um, but it's just... And like what some developers have pointed out, this was dropped on them out of nowhere. It's not like there's like, hey, we have some policy changes that we're looking at that are coming up just so you guys know and you can plan ahead. Um, uh, they just dropped this on all the developers. So like some yeah. developers have mentioned, they are either too small or too big um, uh, as far as the studio, the project, whatever to make the change. There's like, there is a fine middle ground where they're like, hey, we, we can afford to pivot, but not everyone could pivot from Unity. 
And so they're... Yeah. And it's just... Like I said, it's just shitty. Just everything about it's shitty. Yeah. Um, I... think of all of all of this shit Gavin mm -hmm. what do you think of all this stuff <clears throat> sounds like another case of just greedy corporate businesses yeah oh I mean that's <laughs> I'll be honest this is what this uh, this episode is is Oh great! Yeah, yeah. No, uh, there's a there's a lot of uh, like I said when I said, "Hey, do you want to hear good stories or bad stories?" The bad stories are all corporate, uh, corporate related. Oh, of course. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh. But um, yeah. Let me go ahead. Click off that. Um. Okay, so we're going to alternate, so let's have a good story. Uh, Nintendo had a Direct this week and announced a bunch of things, uh, which definitely signal that there's going to be a new console sooner rather than later, uh, based on the caliber of games announced. But uh, they did announce several games. Uh, so they announced uh, Splatoon 3, um, the Side Order DLC, which uh, was the DLC they announced back in June um, that had all the fucked up imagery and stuff. And turns out mm -hmm. the reason it had fucked up imagery and stuff for, uh, for the announcement of the DLC, they finally actually talked about what it's going to be. It's going to be a Splatoon roguelike. Hmm. Uh, so it's going to be just keep making runs and the power-ups and everything you get are randomized and all that. So uh, that's going to be interesting. Um, yeah. Splatoon is not one I would see doing something like that, but they're doing it. Uh, gotta love uh, Nintendo for... Uh, their bravery in such situations. Um, uh, then they announced Mario vs. Donkey Kong, which is uh, basically like a a, a puzzler. Um, like a... Think of the original Donkey Kong, where you're basically fighting Donkey Kong. That's, that's what this mm -hmm. game is. Um, but you've got like... It's like a puzzle platformer uh, yeah. type deal. And then uh, we have Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown. Have you seen any of the stuff for this? I have not. So the whole idea of uh, this, this was also announced back in June, but it was I don't think they said it was coming to Switch and now it, they're announcing it for Switch. But uh, I could be wrong on that. But uh, basically, you're playing this other character who's looking for the main character from the Prince of Persia games, who has been uh, kidnapped or something. Um, and it is a Metroidvania, where you're collecting like uh, power-ups which allow you to access new locations and yeah. so forth. Um, uh, and it looks really good. I I... I think you might like the look of it, Gavin, if you ever looked it up. Oh, all right. Um, Horizon Chase 2, I, I'll be honest, I don't remember that one. Uh, did not stick out well enough in my mind. I'm just reading off a list right now. Because, uh, again, haven't really had time for content creation, so I'm, I'm doing this uh, on the fly. Um... This is from Nobel, by the way. Uh, Crazy Rhythm Castle, um, which 
uh, I also don't remember. I think that was like a party game, like a party game royale type deal. And then, oh, you'll like this one, Gavin. Oh, God. By Anya, Anya, Operation Memories. What? It's a spy family game at, where you play as Anya. I don't know who that is. You've never seen Spy Family? No. <laughs> I figured that. I figured you would watch that. Uh, Anya's no. the little, the little mind reading girl. Oh, okay. I've, I've never, I've, I've barely even seen anything for it. Oh, really? Yeah, I it's, barely know it exists. <laughs> it's, it's real big right now. I'm surprised. Uh, Super <laughs> Mario RPG. Uh, they showed more stuff from it, and uh. I think they announced the date. I don't think they announced the date back in September. Uh, that comes out November 17th. Uh, another code recollection, which um, I'd never heard of. The There's two games in this collection. Uh, the first one came out on the DS or 3DS, and the other one came out on the Wii or Wii U. I'm not sure where they originally came out, but the second one never came out in the West. It was only in Japan. Um, hmm. They're being released on January 19th. Princess Peach Showtime, uh, which is the Princess Peach game that they announced back in June. Uh, they didn't have any other information other than they were making it. Well, here they showed off actual gameplay and uh, the title, which, again, it's Showtime. And... Uh, and the the idea is you're uh, you're playing as Princess Peach to save the play, not save the day, save the play, because mm. there's a monster taking over a theater. Um, and you can get various powers. Uh, let me tell you, I've always been more of a Rosalina guy myself, but <laughs> Kung Fu Peach, woo! <laughs> Um, but yeah, there's also, uh, a, a Swordsman Peach and all this sort of thing. Um, and then Saga Emerald Beyond, which I, I've heard of the Saga series. I've never played any of it. Um, not entirely sure what it is either. Like I said, this was several days ago, so... <laughs> A little bit behind. I didn't rewatch this before I did this. Um, they are releasing uh, Tomb Raiders 1 through 3, the original three Tomb Raiders. Uh, they are releasing a remaster for the Switch uh, where you can toggle hmm. between, uh, I believe you can to toggle between the old graphics and the new graphics. Um, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Detective Pikachu returns, and let me tell you, every time I hear Detective Pikachu open up his <laughs> mouth, it takes me by surprise every time, because I either think, when I think Pikachu, I either think, Pikachu, or I think Ryan Reynolds, but uh, <laughs> as Detective Pikachu in that movie, but actual Detective Pikachu from the game has a voice like this. <laughs> And as long as it's like, Pikachu. Oh, man, I could use some coffee right now. It's like, what the fuck? Doesn't make any sense. Um, and then Trombone Champ comes out, uh, which was, yeah, Trombone Champ. It is a, uh, basically like Guitar Hero, except like, you the different buttons on the controller, uh, the Switch controller, are, like, the different buttons, like, for the trombone. Mm -hmm. And, like, and then you can, um, either use your, you can use your hand, uh, in front of the infrared to simulate pulling the, I'm not, I'm not very musically inclined, but pulling the little thing. Uh, you can use the your slide. hand. In, yeah, the slide. Uh, <laughs> You can use your hand in front of the infrared of the controller to simulate that, or there's other options. You can move the controller up or down. Um, 
And yeah, you basically it's basically like Guitar Hero, only you've got more shit to keep track of. Um, and do. So, uh, fun little fact, I actually know how to play trombone. Oh, really? Do you? I do. Well, uh, maybe Trombone Champ is your game. I think it's on <laughs> PlayStation. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's already out on, like, uh, PlayStation and Xbox and stuff. Yeah. I absolutely um, slap at that game. <laughs> uh, and then we have Battle Crush, which I honestly, I don't even remember that. The others I least remember. Um, I don't remember that, or War Tale, which is also something they announced. Uh, and then Contra Operation Galuga, which is a, uh, which is a, uh, new Contra. So that's, that's exciting. Mm. For all you classic gaming heads out there. Uh, Unicorn Overlord, which, uh, is a, uh, I don't know how to describe the game, but it's it's an anime game made by Atlas, who does like the Persona series and stuff. So th think that um, for that game, uh, Luigi's Mansion Two HD, which is interesting. They announced it for summer twenty twenty four, um, but not only that, Luigi's Mansion Two came out on the three DS. And it was Luigi's Mansion 2, Dark Moon. They took the Dark Moon out of the title for this uh, remaster, which I think oh. is interesting. And then, shout out to friend of the show, uh, Lyric. Good job, Lyric. Uh, another one of his predictions came true. And that's F-099, where you and, nine, and 98 other people are controlling futuristic race cars on... Uh, crazy courses, and the last one to uh, last one to stand wins. It's a battle royale racing game, which I don't know that I've ever heard anything like that before. Uh, let's see. I'll just cover the uh, the highlights at this point. Now I'm looking at the time. Uh. We have WarioWare Move It um, coming out November 3rd. Uh, that's the second WarioWare game to come out on the Switch, which is crazy. Uh, Dave the Diver comes to the Switch on October 26th. Um, that had a big uh, moment recently on it with its release on PC. Um, it's a roguelike cooking sim. Hmm. Fishing and cooking sim. Uh, which is interesting combo of all of that stuff. Basically, you go you dive, you catch fish while you're diving, you take it back to your restaurant, and you cook the fish, and the more you sell at your restaurant, the more you can upgrade your restaurant and your fishing, and you just keep doing that. Hmm. Um, and then a new map for Among Us is coming this October, as well as uh, Mario Kart 8 Booster Course Wave 6, which is the last wave, if you'll remember. Um, the last wave they're doing. And then uh, the surprise announcement... Uh, there was a couple announcements from um, Japan, but I believe those are going to be Japan-only games. Now, the Switch's region uh, is is not region locked, so you could buy the games, but you'd have to buy them from Japanese retailers. Um, so I won't hmm. focus on those. But the last big announcement made: Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door, which is considered by Paper Mario fans to be the best game of the series. Came out almost exactly 20 years ago. And uh, they mm. just dropped it like it was nothing. They're like, oh yeah, by the way, we're doing Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door. And everyone's like, what? 
Um, so any of those games got your uh, got your jimmies tangled? Not really. <laughs> no. I don't. I don't know. It's like. I get excited for very specific games. Like I said, I think you might never like... know what they are, and I never know what they are until I see them. I think you might like uh, Prince of Persia: The Lost Crown. Maybe. Um. Anyway. Uh, do we want to talk? Do we want to talk EA or Ubisoft next? Um, well, we just uh, talked about Unity, who's got EA's old old dude on there, so let's go Ubisoft. All right. Ubisoft plans to close mobile studio Ubisoft London, formerly known as Future Games of London. Uh, 54 staff members would be affected by the closure. Mm. Um, they've as I mentioned, they focus mainly on mobile games. They're best known for the Hungry Shark series, uh, which has 100 billion downloads. Um, however, the series has been uh, uh, recently moved to uh, being developed by Ubisoft Barcelona um, and now has... Uh, and Ubisoft has now decided to shift full development um, to Ubisoft Barcelona, which means there's nothing for Ubisoft London to do, which means the 54 people at Ubisoft London don't have jobs anymore. Um, mm. And here's what they had to say. Uh, As part of our ongoing efforts to enhance efficiency, streamline operations, and reduce costs, we are proposing the consolidation of the ongoing management of the Hungry Shark franchise at our Ubisoft Barcelona studio, which already sees a portion of it. Um, it, it, they also go on to say that... Um, they're committing to supporting uh, the 54 uh, colleagues um, by allegedly helping them find positions, which I'll get into that here in a minute myself. But um, what do you think about uh, the story? <sighs> Fucking... I don't know, it always sucks when companies do shit that cause, you know, people to, you know, lose their jobs. Yeah. It's always a shitty situation. So. I say as I kind of desperately hope that that happens at the place that we work. To give me a reason not to go back. Yeah, but you're also... In a good position, whereas there's other people that aren't in such good positions. Um, yeah. It's just here's the thing in business, you learn that you need to have, I want to say it's like. I just I had the wildest shit happen to me that I've never had happen in this game. What happened? So I'm playing Minecraft. <laughs> I saw that on Discord, yeah. And I am like right here at my uh, <clears throat> at my village, just pulled up, and my game auto saved, and my horse just disappeared from out underneath my ass, and I don't know where it went. Wow, it's just gone. <laughs> like he just like I, I was full speed ahead, and then suddenly I was just on the ground, like the fuck. <laughs> It just, you, it just got Thanos out from underneath my ass. You heard it here, audience. Gavin took a whole horse up his ass. <laughs> An entire horse up the ass. It wasn't just Jeez. the it wasn't just the horse's thing. It was the whole horse. <laughs> Not the whole motherfucker. We were going full speed and just Oh man. 
Man, I wish I could take a whole horse. <laughs> um, uh, listen, it, it, something that's taught in a lot of, well, used to be, I guess, I can't say for sure anymore because fucking all these companies are crash now. Um, so they can't be teaching that much. But in business, typically you're taught, hey, got to make sure you have like a rainy day fund in case things don't go well in case you know you're hit you're on rough times um mm -hmm. and these companies just are not doing that they are they're flying by the seat of their pants they're um Like, they're talking about up here, where was it? Um, enhance efficiencies, streamline operations, and reduce costs. Just take those other two out there. There's no way getting rid of 54 staff members enhances efficiency or streamlines operations. There's no way that having less people does those two things. It is, as it should say as ongoing part to reduce costs. That's what it, that's what it should read. Um, and then, Until like the I said, they, uh, they're like, oh, and we are committed to supporting them through the process of them finding new jobs or, you know, whatever. It's actually, it says with utmost consideration, but the idea which is separate. just fancy fancy which is just fancy talk for them saying that like saying like oh yeah we'll keep them on our minds and yeah. not actually do anything because the, the other thing is what jobs every other video game company right now is also laying people off and each one of them's like oh we're gonna help them find jobs elsewhere what jobs if the jobs were there you wouldn't be laying them off don't Lie, don't pretend like you're actually doing something nice. Fuck you. Preach. Uh, it's just, this is, what, the sixth time in the, you know, sixth episode of Extra Extra just this year where we've covered this shit? I just, I don't understand how it's so hard to plan ahead. I understand Ubisoft in particular has had some rough patches um, with attempted uh, corporate takeovers and all of this other stuff that's been going on with them over the past five or so years. I get that. Mm -hmm. But these are people's lives we're talking about. Uh, and it, uh, I didn't even include this other story. There's another story regarding Ubisoft um, that came out this week where uh, they're like, oh, by the way, I know we told you all, all of you guys that you can work from home. You can't work from home anymore. You have to come to the office and that's non-negotiable. It's like uh, people accepted these jobs with the promise that they were remote, and now, now you're saying they're not remote. So people that accepted the job because they either A, didn't have transport to get there, or B, wanted to live in another state, have to uproot their lives. Or C, agoraphobia. Yeah, that's, that's mm -hmm. another thing. But it... And I don't understand it because... You're saving money on not having an office space. You don't have to pay. I mean, we, we talk all the time about, uh, you and I talk about all the time, how expensive it is just to rent or own any property anymore because of how the, uh, uh, just the, the housing market is right now. They don't have to pay that exorbitant amount for the housing market by not having an office. But instead they're like, no, we're gonna pay exorbitant prices 
to have this building and we are going to make our employees uproot their lives and go work there when they don't want to work there. So they're not going to work as hard because they don't want to work there. I, I, all of these moves make zero sense to me. Why that paying for that office space that you're forcing people to go to, you could have used that money to pay these 54 employees and kept them around. Mm -hmm. I'm going to save the rants because we're going to have that. Uh, th we're going to come back to this later with EA. Uh, Companies but, don't care about their employees. All they care about is money. I know, because we live in a capitalistic hellhole. Yep. Um, USA, USA. Okay, here we go. This week, literally hours after the Nintendo Direct, there was also a PlayStation State of Play. Um, oh, the first one. Do you remember uh, getting it over it? Getting over it with Bennett Foddy? Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, Bennett Foddy in that studio is making a new game called Baby Steps, and it looks Fuck. incredible. It is a walking simulator, but literally you're controlling each foot individually. Jesus fucking Christ. And there's one point in the trailer, which was phenomenal, where he finally gets over this one obstacle in the trailer. And then some other guy walks up perfectly normal. is like, hey, how are you doing? And he's like, oh, I just, I need to... I need to get some food from up there. And he's like, oh, yeah, well, there's a grapple point right there. Just use the grapple point. And, he's, and the guy goes, oh, yeah, I'm going to use the fucking grapple point. Yeah, just use the grapple point. I'm going to use the fucking grapple point. Yeah, just use it's this back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> and the, guy, the guy's in, like, those old-fashioned, like, uh, undergarments, you know, like the onesie undergarments that are like almost skin colored that you see. With, with, with the butt flap? Yeah, yeah, with yeah. Yeah, he's in one of those. He does, he clearly doesn't have a grapple hook. And then after the guy leaves, he's like, alright, gotta gotta keep moving, and then continues walking or whatever. Uh, <laughs> great trailer. Loved it. Uh, super excited about that, as much as it's gonna piss me off. Um, then one of my favorite franchises, Ghostbusters Rise of the Ghost Lord comes out on PSVR 2, October 26th. Uh, oh, and Baby Steps is a 2024 game. No, no exact announcement. Uh, speaking of VR, uh, Resident Evil 4 Remake VR is this winter. Um, yeah. and then Resident Evil 4 Remake Separate Ways DLC comes out, uh, in three days, September 21st. Hmm. Did you ever play the Separate Ways DLC for the original RE4? No, I didn't. I guess, uh, I guess it follows uh, Ada. <clears throat> uh, is it Ada or Ava? It's uh, Ada. That's what I thought. I said Ada it, and then I was like, yeah, I said it, and then I was like, wait, was that right? Well, I know, um, I know. It's like, Ava's a more common name than Ada is, so, like, you're like... Yeah. <laughs> um, Avatar Frontier Support uh, Pandora, December 7th. I, I, um, maybe this is a hot take. I don't know. I never watched even the second Avatar movie, because I thought the a first Avatar movie was trash. Um, I enjoyed the first one. Not me. I was not a big fan of the first Avatar movie. But the well, Avatar... I was also I'm also younger than you, so I was a little bit younger whenever it came out. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I haven't seen it since. I haven't seen it since then. I played the PlayStation game though. I enjoyed that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That. So Avatar Frontiers of Pandora is. Uh, 
from previously mentioned Ubisoft. It is, uh, it's basically Avatar, but made like Far Cry. Mm -hmm. Um, Ghost Runner 2 comes out October 26th. Uh, then they announced the PlayStation 5 Deep Earth Collection, which is, uh, a red, uh, a, you know, um, uh, red shells, blue shells, and white shells for your play, or I guess silver shells for your PlayStation. Um, <laughs> and that's supposed to be, you know, rubies, sapphires, and diamonds. Um, <laughs> But the problem is, one of their previous collections was red, blue, and uh, I forget the other color. I think the other color was purple. But it's just like, they've already done these colors. Uh, these are just shinier because they're supposed to be jewels. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of people were kind of down on that. Uh, Hell Divers 2 comes out February 8th. Spider-Man 2, obviously we already knew, came out, uh, is coming out October 20th. Uh, they showed more of that game, and previews for that game uh, uh, happened, and... Uh, your dog wants your attention, dog. I know. <laughs> and people are excited about that. Uh, Tales of Arise expansion comes out, which is crazy, because that game came out two years ago. Um, Honkai Star, Star Rail comes out October eleventh uh, um, for the PS Five. Uh, if if you're wondering why you've been hearing about it before this, uh, it's been out on PC. Mm -hmm. Home Stars is early 2024, and man, are they marketing that pink-haired anime girl? Which, admittedly, smart move, but uh. That's all you see on the marketing is the pink-haired anime girl from Foam Stars. <laughs> uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which is part two to the Final Fantasy VII Remake uh, trilogy, uh, comes out February 29th. Hey, come here. I'm right here. <laughs> He's like, attention to me. Angela, he wants you. Uh, that comes out February 29th. Um, and so that's it for those announcements. All right. So, uh, Ascendant Studios, um, which made, uh, Immortals of Avium, which was funded by EA and published by EA, um, has laid off half of its staff. Um, nice. uh, the CEO of the studio, Brett Robbins, uh, called the decision painfully difficult but necessary. Hmm. Today we are heartbroken as we part ways with friends and colleagues at Ascendant Studios, about 45% of our team. This was painfully difficult, but necessary decision that was not made lightly. Nevertheless, we have to make this adjustment now that uh, Mortals of Avium has shipped. We are supporting those affected in every way we can, including comprehensive severance packages. If you can afford to pay them severance, you can afford to pay them and job placement assistance. There's that job placement again, where all mm -hmm. these jobs they're placing them in because everyone else is fucking laying off people too, <laughs> as well as support services for those who remain. If your studio is looking for proven Unreal Engine 5 artists and engineers, please reach out and let us know so we can introduce you to some incredibly talented game devs. If you're actually hiring and not also laying people off. <laughs> that, yeah. that part I added. Um, <laughs> I'm so proud of what our independent development team has accomplished with Immortals of Avium. Today we've created a new AAA studio, a new IP on new technology during an era where uh, of our industry where that is exceedingly rare. 
We poured our passion into Immortals, and while hearing, wearing our hearts on our sleeves, the studio will continue to work that way as we support the development of this game and our Immortals IP moving forward with future updates and offers. To my team reading this message, because heaven for me, me talking to you myself, especially those <laughs> leaving us, thank you from the because bottom of my heart. Because we're laying you off. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for your invaluable contributions to Ascendance culture and your tremendous impact on bringing Immortals of Avium to life. We wish you nothing but success in the next chapter of your careers. Please stay in touch, even though we are fucking you over. <laughs> even though we are firing you. That'd be like one of that would be like our job firing us and like like our store manager would be like, keep in touch. Yeah. I was like, bitch, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> yeah. We hope you visit every like now You can and keep then. in touch with these nuts. Uh -oh. <laughs> um uh, I'm old, I know. Um, so Ascendant Studios is a indie studio that was founded by Brett Robbins, who is the creative director on the original Dead Space, as well as Sledgehammer's Call of Duty games like Modern Warfare 3, Advanced Warfare, and World War II. Um, and Immortals of Avium actually had a pretty decent Metacritic score of 70, but it came out August 22nd, literally between uh, Tears of the Kingdom and Starfield. So they literally released it where, in typical EA's fashion, where it didn't have a chance to succeed. Um, uh, but basically, uh, the game was a first-person shooter, but instead of shooting guns, you shot magic. And it had the tone, like the, uh, a, the tone of, like, a Marvel movie. Okay. Um, but, and obviously I mentioned EA, it was an, it was the last EA original game, um, to be made. Uh, and so... Yeah, so it was funded by EA, which is why I brought them up. But it's just... I'm oh sorry, and your wife are dancing. <laughs> yeah, I... I could hear something going on in there. Um... I just... Again, like with what I previously mentioned with um, Ubisoft... <sighs> You gotta be prepared for these things, especially, especially if you're going to release your game between two of the biggest games this year. Now, I understand the business side of releasing game. You have a window that you need to release it by to keep the studio running, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, keep the influx of cash going. But legitimately like right between the two biggest games is when you're like yeah this will work <laughs> yeah this will work uh, i just and i and i also understand that the year is not going to get any any better for a releasing game because like i said starfield just happened and uh next month we have um a Mario game and a Spider-Man game, which oh by the way, release on the same day as each other. So like, Ooh, even if they which release, think, which which do you think is going to succeed more? Probably, honestly, probably Spider-Man, um, because Spider-Man is a money-making machine. Um, mm. Not that Mario is not, but. Um, it's also a 2D Mario rather than a 3D Mario, and they don't typically sell as well as 3D, as far as I'm aware. I could be wrong about that. I'm not up to date on my Mario numbers, um, but I, I think Spider-Man's going to do better, honestly. Um, 
but it, it, it it's just this should have been planned out a little bit better there is no excuse it in my mind if you're if you are laying people off or closing down studios in my mind that is a failure of management mm -hmm. and you know what's going to happen to those managers they're going to find a nice cushy job somewhere else because they have the mm -hmm. management experience it's shitty management experience but it's management experience um hmm, i wonder where you've seen that before i know the first <laughs> the first job i had there was a store manager uh he every store he went to he went to to close the store so if he was assigned to your store you knew it was closing um mm -hmm. and i had uh i had just gotten a new job when he was announced it when it was announced he was coming to the store i worked at um mm -hmm. I said, like, whew, dodged a bullet there. Now, he managed to actually stay at that store for several years, but the fact that he had a re oh. reputation of going to a store to close it, mm -hmm. what, why is he still in that position if he's got that reputation? Why is he the one surviving, whereas everyone else is sure they might find some other jobs throughout the company but for the most part they're out on the streets and he's just going around putting people out of business you know I, mm -hmm. I, I just don't understand the amount of ineptitude that happens across all of cap the capitalistic society right now any any area that's capitalistic, any country that's capitalistic, the amount of ineptitude among people in power boggles my mind. Because right. you mentioned our, our current job. There's a lot of ineptitude <laughs> across the board. One of the biggest companies in the world. But, mm -hmm. man... They do not ha know how to run a business, and they do not put people in charge of the stores who know how to run stores. And the people that know how to, uh, that are put in charge of running stores do not put people under them who know how to run the place while they're gone. It it's just a total. Well, I mean, should have known from again that was going to happen with the place we work because that place was. That company was started in my home state, and I can tell you right now, people in my home state are not very fucking smart. I could, uh, I'm holding back on the uh, the southern jokes. All right, I'm trying. You can go ahead and go for it. I know. <laughs> Bunch of fucking redneck hate and bullshit. Uh, your state also produced the guy that fucks cars, so. <laughs> we did do that we did do that that caught me so off guard I heard that shit I'm like god damn it <laughs> anyway I want to say, say I'm shocked but I'm not <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you can pull off a perfect method because of your state too it's great but that's less because of my state and just more of the fucking people I was raised around <laughs> Oh, um, well, that's my family. <laughs> uh, so anyway, that's I could keep going on and on and on about all of this bullshit, but at this point, it's just rehashing the same thing over and over again, and we're gonna mm -hmm. rehash it again here in a couple weeks when the next company decides, hey, you know what, we're gonna shut down this studio or we're going to lay off this amount of people fucking microsoft has laid off an entire football stadium 
like an NFL stadium's worth of people in one go. Jesus Christ. That's all at once. It's like, fuck these people. I, I hate, don't get me wrong, I still hate them. I hate Apple. But you know what? Kudos to Tim Cook. You know what he did? When, the, when Apple was struggling, he's like, I'm going to take a pay cut so that way we don't have to lay anyone off. Respect. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the most you're going to get out of me. But <laughs> respect nonetheless. Um, anyway. I hate this. Can I, can I just say how much I fucking hate these stories because of <laughs> the human factor of it that just these companies just don't understand. Yeah. Well, if you liked or even if you didn't like this podcast, make sure to do all of the things like hitting the like button and hitting the subscribe button and ringing that bell at the Exa Play on, plays on YouTube or giving a high rating on whatever podcast service you use so you can find like-minded people. Be sure to tell people about the show. Word of mouth is the best way to help us grow, and I brought it up before, but on patreon.com slash the briefing room, you can financially support the show and get cool rewards as well. That's all from us. Take care. Mm -hmm.